In this video, I'm going to share with you a complete process to building a WooCommerce website with Elementor that's optimized for sales and conversions. Also, we're going to be looking at setting up our on-site marketing with Omnisense. And if you're building e-commerce websites for your clients or for yourself, you're going to want to check this out because building a WooCommerce website with Elementor is far different from just building a regular Elementor brochure website. There is so much more that needs to go into it. And from what I found in my experience of building e-commerce websites for years, well, if we aren't following a process, it gets really messy. It gets overcomplicated overwhelming and a lot of vital areas are missed which results in prolonged and late projects and a whole lot of headaches my agency the lightbox has specialized in e-commerce websites for years and you might not know this about me i started my web journey as a shopify developer building custom shopify websites i've always had a passion for e-commerce conversion rate optimizations and most importantly helping my clients boost their online sales which is why i'm excited to share with you my full process for building a woocommerce website and also sharing my marketing and conversion rate optimization strategies with you that has gotten me and my clients awesome results for years now and real quick there's a couple of links inside the description to check out one is for the lightbox community where i'm going to be sharing this template for the woocommerce project it's a step-by-step -step checklist i'm going to be sharing it for free for all lightbox community members also there is a link to omniscient now omniscient is a powerful marketing tool and when you see what it does inside this video you're definitely going to want to check this out for your woocommerce websites all right let's dive in part one the design process and this process is much more than just building a mock-up like this this is where we are doing our strategy where we're actually strategically planning out our e-commerce site we want to make sure it is optimized for conversions and sales so in this stage we are planning out our user flows how is the user going to navigate through the content through the whole sales process. We're gonna be planning out our navigation and creating our menus. Also, we're gonna be building our wireframes. Now, we could do all this inside of a tool like Figma for any of those of us that are designers and experienced with Figma, but we don't need to make everything fancy to make it effective. We could even just use a notebook. In fact, I start all of my projects and all of my strategy processes, including wireframes, inside of a notebook but we don't even need to have fancy tools nowadays because we got these ai tools like this reloom right here now in reloom we could go ahead and do our sitemap our user flow and our wireframes really quickly and you do not need any design skills for this let's say we want to create our sitemap right here our menu how do we want to navigate traffic through our website well if it's an e-commerce site we don't want to navigate them to contact pages about pages we want them to go to the shop page we want to navigate them to the most important products these are going to be your best sellers and the products that you want to sell most on your website. You're gonna put those on your homepage and then maybe we'll send them over to collections. And this kind of user flow is what we wanna look for on an e-commerce website because we wanna flow traffic and guide them to shopping through the shopping experience to purchase our products. And then you could continue on this building out your site map and really planning how you want to drive your traffic. Next, then we could work on our wireframe and the wireframes. This is where a whole lot of the strategy comes out. This is where we plan our flow and our layout for our pages. Let me show you what it would look like. So we could start off with our nav bar and don't worry too much about the whole design of everything what we are doing is just putting in our section strategically how do we want to lay everything out so let me go ahead and put in you could choose which kind of banner that you want right here i'm going to choose a full image banner let's add a new section you know the next section that i would want to add is going to be something that shows some social proof let me try some logos here all right, I'm going to put a very simple one here. You always want to start off with social proof up at the top. Now, your hero, your banner, this should say exactly what your site is about. If you are selling something, it needs to be 
clear on this banner that this is what you're selling don't try to get too creative and don't worry about selling sounding salesy it's an e-commerce site you want to make that clear and then you want to show some social proof this could be something like we've been featured inside of you know these brands we've worked with these brands it could be testimonials it could be your google star ratings your trust pilot ratings some sort of social proof right at the top after that we're going to want to put your products at the top as well and this is where you're going to put your most important products you want to put your not only your best sellers but the ones you want to sell the most of so let's put a product grid at the top next up we could go ahead and throw something in for our benefits that talk about our products a little bit more uh and then we could put in some testimonials let's say uh, let me type it in here testimonials and then we're going to need a newsletter for sure you're going to want a sign up newsletter because that is going to play a huge part in your marketing and then you're going to want to end everything with a footer so you could choose a kind of footer layout that you would like you could go ahead and put that in there but this is only the thought process right here this is what makes this step so important you're actually planning it out you're not worrying about the aesthetics of it you're not worrying about the actual design as far as like colors and fonts you're worrying about the layout and you're going to be looking at the content how are you speaking to everyone now another very important part of the step right here is the seo and this is the one that is often forgotten during the stage seo plays a vital role in the very beginning of the strategy because all of this right here that we're looking at this is going to be how we are communicating with our clients and you could go in here and this is where you do want to start your content like banner uh, uh title about the products we sell all right and usually i just start off with notes inside here about what are we going to write about because I'm, I'm thinking strategically i'm not doing the copywriting yet but instead i'm planning it out and this is also where we're going to start planning out our h tags our hierarchy and think about what is the primary keyword to this page it's going to help with the overall direction for seo and get you set up from the very beginning and then you could do this as well for your other pages like your product page and your shop page and strategically plan them out and you would do something just like this let's say it is for the product page let's go ahead and type in product up here to see what product page layouts that we get so we could choose which layout that we want which elements we want and it's just to help us get a start and start planning it out and then you're going to want to think of what you're going to want to do for your product page like you're going to want to put reviews inside here you're going to want to make sure those are showing you're going to want to probably put something about how it works in here let's see you know and add a section that talks more about the product it's all up to you and the product that you're selling they're all different for an example let's take a look at this product here this is selling shoes well there's not much to tell about selling shoes right here it's a shoe so that one's cool but let's take a look at this this is more of a specialty niche product right here this eco style headphones well this one you're going to have a section for selling but then you're probably going to want to put more about the product because it is more niche right here so you got to think about what direction do you want to go in for selling your products and it all happens here inside the design stage in the strategy and again you could use a tool like this in reloom and by the way this is ai for example i could go over here and let's delete and start over with all this you could use the ai feature and put in a prompt right here and it's going to generate everything for you giving you a good starting point you could then use this for your user flow but also for your wireframes as well it's going to set it all up for you like we are living in a really good time for uh, anybody who wants to take more of their own control building the websites but again you could use a notebook for all this as well and this is where i always start once your strategy is completed the next step would be to create mock-up designs but look at this is only if you have the budget for it if you're doing this for your own business if you have the budget to hire 
uh, designer that can do mock-ups or if you have the skills. If you don't have the skills yet to do this, here's a hard truth. This is hard for me to admit as a designer. That is, you can still build an e-commerce website that gets incredible sales that still performs very well as long as the content is good, as long as the messaging and positioning are really good, and as long as it has a good user experience, meaning it is easy to sell, and also by implementing some marketing strategies on the website that I'm going to show in just a moment in this video. With that alone, you could build an e-commerce site that sells really well i've seen many e-commerce websites where the design is really bad but they're absolutely crushing it in sales now if you can it would be great to have both a great design and a well-performing e-com site but it isn't always absolutely necessary part two the elementor process now real quick if you are using another builder like bricks builder or breakdance it's all going to be the same exact process we're just going to show you step by step on how to set everything up in your wordpress website and elementor as well as in woocommerce we're going to be using this elementor site right here for an example this is my example website that i built in the design with elementor course with Elementor and WooCommerce. And as you can see here, I've implemented the strategies that I talked about when we were looking at the wireframes. We have our social proof right here at the top. We have our products right here at the top. We make sure that we have a little something about the brand, a lot of images, but also some testimonials. So this all is part of best practices for conversion rate optimizations right here these are all strategies that are very effective let's go ahead and start now on the setup in the back end the first thing you're going to want to do is to complete all of your wordpress settings you're going to want to go through your settings you're going to want to make sure that when you are building, you have your, your uh, indexing turn off and just go through each one of these settings, making sure you are good. After you've gone through all of your settings, you're going to want to go to your pages. You're going to want to create all of your pages like your about us, your blog, your contact page, whatever page you're going to have on your website create all of them we're going to use those for our menus really quick though do not forget to add your policies right here you're going to want to make sure you have a privacy policy a terms and conditions and you're going to want to make sure your shipping policies your refund policies are there as well you could put those in your terms and conditions but i prefer to create separate policy pages for shipping and returns they're great for seo and they also work well inside of faqs so another page you are probably going to want to create and one that i would always create is an faq page that covers all of this and it's great for seo as well as the user customer experience next step you're going to want to create all of your menus so go here to your menus and build them out now by this point you should have all of your wordpress settings done you should be good on the wordpress side now let's go over to our elementor settings and then from here go through each of your settings making sure you're good these are my default settings right here if you're going to use integrations add them in advance these are my default settings then we have our performance and then go through your features now this always changes because elementor is always changing them so make sure you go through and set these up like right here i would turn on grid container it's really nice to see that this is now out of beta so definitely grid container is a big win and then the next step you are going to want to set up your global styles and the global styles are going to be these they are going to be your site settings back over here you're going to want to make sure you go through each of your settings get them set up to your design style you know things like the layout and so on and then you're going to want to make sure to set up your global colors and your global fonts this is going to make the build of your site much more streamlined it's always the first step to building an elementor website once all that is set up the next step is to go over to your theme builder and then you're going to want to build your header template after your header template you're going to want to build your footer template now i've already built mine over here but we're going to make updates to it as well coming up 
But once these are all built, you got your header and footer dialed in. The next step is to go over to your homepage and build out your homepage. In your homepage, this is where you're going to want to spend a lot of time. You're going to want to go through all the little details of the design. You're going to want to dial it in. Look at the details, the small little details, and get everything just right. All of your fonts, your typography, your colors, your layouts. This is where most of the time is spent because once you dial this in, it is going to make building the rest of your pages a whole lot easier. You're going to be able to replicate those styles. Your globals are going to be set up and it's going to streamline the whole process. So get this page 100% completed along with your footer and along with your header. And then over here where your products are going to go, just leave it blank for right now. We're going to come back to that in just a moment. Once your homepage is dialed in 100%, it's looking like it's good to go, you're ready, and you're ready to start building other pages, it is time to start the next step. And that is going to be the WooCommerce process, which is step number three. The first step is to go to WooCommerce and install it. And then you're going to want to go through the wizard and your setup process and complete it to the best of your ability. Fill in as many details as you possibly can. Now, when it comes to the shipping and the tax and your payment gateway, we're going to do those in a later stage. Right now, we just want to add in all the information that we can. And if we go over to our plugins, we should only have Elementor, Elementor Pro, and WooCommerce active at this point. Do not activate anything else if you have other plugins on your site. Leave those for the end. And the reason for this is WooCommerce is heavy. Elementor is also heavy and the two of these are really heavy plugins and if we start adding all of our other plugins and activating them it's going to create conflict and it's going to make things slower and more difficult to work with and just by having these three it'll make everything a whole lot faster and your 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 work a lot easier for you now next up you're going to want to go to your products and you're going to want to add about 12 products it all depends on your site now if your e-commerce site is more niched more small and you only have less than 12 products go ahead and add them all but if you have a large website 50 100 hundreds of products only add 12 for right now we just want to get 12 added all set up add in all the details set them up fully add in their categories as well because we're going to use that to complete the rest of our website build the goal right now is to complete the website build and then after the website is built up then we're going to go to our WooCommerce functions and set that up. Now let's complete the build. And the first step is to go to your header and let's add in our menu cart. We want to have this inside of our menu so people could, you know, check out. We always want to have this right here. In fact, I can move this to this side. And then you would want to take time styling all that up. The next step is to go to the home page. And here we are going to add in our loop grid widget. And we're going to create our product loop grids. Now, this is a powerful tool right here. I have some videos on this. I'll leave links inside the description to tutorials on how to build this. But once we get in our loop grid right here and we add in our products on our home page, we've already dialed in the design. Now the home page is completed there is only one thing left to do to our home page before we get started with our shop and product pages and that is to fix the links inside of our header and inside of our footer mostly the footer because when we installed woocommerce it automatically added an account page a checkout page a cart page so we're probably going to want to have links inside here say to a my account page for people to access their dashboard whatever it is make sure you update your links if it's for products or categories add all of your links and make sure you're good to go this way you are 100 percent now Finish with your homepage and you're ready to get started on the next steps, building your products and your shop pages. The next step is to set up our WooCommerce pages. That is going to be the My Account page, your cart page, and your checkout page. And now, luckily, a new feature Elementor has given us is the ability to style these within Elementor, which is awesome. So right here for the account page, we would use our account widget. 
we would go through it and we would style it up setting up all of our settings in here for the cart page we would do the same thing using the new cart widget where we got full control over everything and then for the checkout page we would do the same this way we could you know without having to write a bunch of css we could style this up and make it feel like it's part of the brand and get more creative with it before i would always write tons and tons of css this used to be a very uh very developer focused stage in building the woocommerce sites but now with elements where it's made it a whole lot easier the next step is to build the shop archive page from here we're going to go to our theme builder over to products archive and then we are going to create a page and this is all going to depend on the kind of site that you are building now if you have a site like this where there's only a few products well we could do a bit more here we could add more content we could you know keep it simple but if it's more niche with high quality products i would take a different direction on this with more content with more about the brand trying to boost those sales but let's say you got a big website with tons of products like this then your shop page is going to be more product focused right here with filters and i wanted to show this example right here because this kind of filter it's totally doable you could build this with something like jet filters or wp grid builder but this is also complicated and it takes a bit of time we're going to do complicated features like this and functions at a later stage right now don't worry about that instead build out your page first create your create your lucris create your archive and we're going to do the same thing also for our search results as well we want to make sure we create an archive for our search results now the awesome thing about this and the loop builder is that let's say we go to the shop page well we could use the same exact loop that we built on the home page and this is the reason why we now are working on the shop page and the search results page because we are really just building the loop grids inside here for the products right after we built the loop grid on the home page we're doing it all at once this way we're focused on building our product loops on our website inside of the same process inside of the same steps instead of jumping around one thing about this process that i'm showing it is designed to streamline your project that is the reason why we're going to come back to the more complex features later next up we want to build our product page template it's going to be back here in the theme builder in our single products and we are going to take time on this template the product page is very important we want to make sure we give special attention to it we plan it out but then we're also using our strategy that we built here inside of our wireframe so we'll take this and use it for our product page that way it is built to sell we're going to want things like reviews on here we're going to want things like testimonials social proof like what we got right here we're also going to want related more recent products as well for our cross sales but then we want to make sure we have something where we're showing the reviews that we're showing something that helps build trust like what we got right here like free shipping worldwide uh, whatever you could think of to build trust we want to use that here and this is a really good example right here this is a really clean product page we got the reviews over here it uh makes it easier to use uh it shows something for trust that stands out we got our social right over here as well that way people could share it we want to use these inside of our design and build because it's going to help to boost sales also an faq is awesome to have it helps with the customer experience answering questions but also great for seo customer reviews and then related products right here and then we got something to help build trust people want to see these i want to see these as a customer i want to know is there customer support are there options for free shipping are there ways to get discounts so think of all those methods right here and we want to implement them inside of our product page template once your shop page your product page your search results page once those are all completed they're dialed in they're 100 done now you only have to build out the rest of your pages like your about page if you're doing a blog build that out contact page make sure to get all of your term pages 
completed. Build the rest of your pages and finalize all of them because once you do that, your website in the front end is good to go. By this stage inside of the build process, your front end, the page builds, should be completed. Once those are done, now we're going to move into the back end of WooCommerce and we're going to start to set up our shipping, taxes, and all the different functions and features. And the first step to all of that is going back over to your products and adding all of them. This is all going to depend on how many products you have. But here's a tip. If you have hundreds of products, maybe even thousands of products, if you have a high quantity like that, you might want to think about getting a VA to help you with this task because that could take not only hours, it could take days we've had websites where it took well over a week just to upload the, the the products even if it is just creating a csv or doing it manually having a va is going to be cost effective and it's going to save you so much time because we're going to need our time and attention in other places and i'll show you that next so yeah this is the next step right here adding all of your products now Next up, we want to add in our taxes. And we could do that by going back over to the home and WooCommerce through our wizard and setting up our collect tax. But this is a very simple method. And if you're going to collect tax in a simple way, say it is a set tax across the board, 7%, 10%, whatever it is. Well, it doesn't always work that way because we're all in different parts of the world. You might be inside Europe where you're only going to collect VAT from certain countries. You might be in the U.S. where, well, depending on the person's state is going to have a different tax as well. And for those situations where it needs to be more dynamic, you're probably going to need to get a paid plugin for this and spend the time on the setup. I've had to do it several times, especially for U.S. sites where it's different tax based on the different states. You're going to need a special plugin that can handle it. And this is one of those ones that's going to take a bit of time setting up. But the next step, and this is going to be setting up your shipping. Again, they have simple options built in. If you want to keep it simple, not charge for shipping or charge a flat rate for everybody, no matter where they're at, that is a very simple method. But if you want to have things where you are charging the exact price, let's say from FedEx based on the location, or let's say you're only going to ship to specific countries and that every place is going to have a different shopping fee based on the weights. Or if you are going to give multiple options, let's say people have an option for uh, seven to 14 days normal shipping time or an expedited one to two day shipping option for an additional fee. Well, this is going to take a whole lot of work. Shipping is where the bottleneck really happens in the e-commerce project. And even though we're setting this up at this stage of the website build, if we are building this for our client or if you're building this website for yourself, you need to start planning out your shipping from the very start. When you are planning out your fulfillment process, you need to start thinking about your shipping because you have to set something up with your local carrier. Whatever carrier you're going to use, you're going to have to arrange things with them, get everything set up with them. It's a process. This is part of setting up an e-commerce business. Do not overlook the shipping and think this will be easy. It is not. I've never been in a situation where the shipping came out a lot easier than what I thought it would be. It's always usually a lot more work to it. So plan and prepare and be very thoughtful with how you're going to go about setting up your shipping. One tool that I use for pretty much all of our WooCommerce websites that requires custom shipping is going to be the table rate shipping plugin. This tool right here has saved us countless hours right here and made our project so much easier. It just works really well. There are other table rate shipping plugins out there, but this is one, if you're a developer building e-commerce websites, you got to get used to right here. It is one of those essential plugins for shipping with e-commerce. And then the next step is going to be setting up your invoices. That is if you're going to be providing invoices. After that, the next step is to set up your payment gateway. You want to figure out what are you going to use? Is it going to be Stripe? Is it going to be PayPal or another one? And again, even though we are adding the payment gateway at this stage in the website build, 
we also need to let our clients know, or if this is for ourselves, we got to start in the very beginning setting this up. If you're somewhere in the US, you might be able to get a Stripe account going pretty quickly. But I'm located in Thailand and I've built a lot of e-commerce websites for Thai businesses. Over here, it could take up to three months to get approved for a payment gateway where you got to send a bunch of company information, registration documents, and so on. So start this at the very beginning because the last thing that you want is your site to be finished, ready to go, you're ready to start selling, you got a launch date, you're announcing it in your social media, but then you don't have a payment gateway ready because you're still waiting to get approved and they keep asking for more documents. So get that set up from the very beginning and if you are going to add invoices, go ahead and set this up as well. This usually takes an additional plugin. And those are the big three, the core parts to the e-commerce side of things, setting up the tax, the shipping, and the payment gateway. With those set up, you're ready to go and start selling. Now, there's still other things you're going to want to do and set up on the site, but we have basically gotten the e-commerce website up to selling standards right now at this stage. Now, the next stage is to go back through. Make sure you got everything set up in here to the best of your ability. And then you're gonna go over to your settings. And you want to be very detailed with everything. You wanna take time going through each one of your settings. One of the settings that you're gonna to wanna to take special attention on is gonna be your emails. You're gonna to wanna to go through these and you're going to want to set them up and you're going to want to write them and you're going to want to update the content inside of them. Now, one thing you're going to need for your website is going to be an SMTP. Now, for any of these emails to be sent out are transactional emails. These are emails like when somebody makes a purchase, they get the confirmation uh, when something is out for delivery or whatever it is. These emails need an SMTP to be sent out from your website. This is not reliable by default with just the regular WordPress. We need one. This is where we're going to need a third party tool. This is the one I use. I use Amazon SES, simple email service. It is powerful. It's reliable. It's the cheapest one, but it's also the most complicated to set up. Just a heads up on that one, but it could be figured out for those of you more technical. Then we also got other ones like SendGrid and Elastic Email. Basically, we need a third-party service. It's going to be paid. I still have not found a free, reliable one. I think maybe Google Workspace might have it. I haven't used that yet. So basically, we do need a paid SMTP service to send all of these out. And then we'll use a plugin like Fluent SMTP to connect our SMTP third-party service to our website. But if we're to use a tool like Omnison, well, we're gonna make that so much easier and we don't have to worry about all that and we're gonna make this so much better, heaps better. This has always been a pain to me right here. That's why a tool like Omnison is going to, is gonna make everything just not only better for you, but also for your customers, which leads to more sales. At this stage, you should be ready to go and sell. This is where we test, test, and test. I call it the three testing process because testing once isn't good enough. You wanna make sure you test thoroughly. Test the checkout process. Make sure adding products to the cart. Check in if the quantities are working. Check out how is the car working? Are you able to add quantities? Are you able to reduce them? And start checking out. Make sure your customers can purchase and there are no issues. You're gonna do this by actually purchasing from your website. I like to create coupons that make my products like 10 cents. That way I can make actual live purchases to see is everything working correctly? Are we getting all of our emails correctly? What is the user experience like? Also, you're gonna to wanna to check out all the shipping, use VPNs, change different addresses, see and make sure that your shipping rates are correct. The last thing you want is to launch the website and the shipping rates be off, and people who should be paying like $20 for shipping are paying a dollar. Well, 
you know, the clients or your own business is going to have to eat that cost. So we want to make sure we're very thorough with our testing. Now, once you got your testing done, you should be able to be good enough to push this site live, but you're going to have more functions and features like complex filters. Maybe you want to do subscriptions. You want to have some upsells. You want to add all those fun, nifty WooCommerce plugins to your website and start setting things up. Well, that is going to be done at this stage. Now you want your website built first, 100% before you start adding different plugins, different code snippets, and start building these features, these heavy features. And the reason is we want to make sure the build is streamlined. It's going to be good enough to go live. And then when it comes to these features, well, these features are something that you should be able to add on gradually. One of the common mistakes I see in an e-commerce project is trying to add on all these different ideas for features and functions at the very beginning. Try to keep it minimal. Add only what is needed to get started with and then see how it performs. Start to gather data, then add on as needed. That is more methodical and more thoughtful instead of just trying to cram everything together because you got a lot of cool ideas. I get it, I've been there, but trust me, this is going to guarantee the project gets to the finish line on time. And then one final step, after you've added those features, test again, test, test, and test. You wanna make sure you test a whole lot. Even get somebody from the outside to come in and test, somebody with fresh eyes. Have them also start to try different uh, experiences purchasing. You want to have multiple people testing to get best results. Part four, the marketing and growth process. It's time now to optimize our website and start the marketing and getting some sales coming in and continue boosting those sales. To get started, you're going to want to add a heat map. I always use heat maps to start collecting data on how the actual user experience is and how people are interacting on the website. If you have the budget, Hotjar is probably the best out there for a paid tool for our heat maps, but a really good free tool that I think is often overlooked is Microsoft Clarity. This is free, it's lightweight, and it'll give you so many insights to your website. Then you're also going to want to set up your analytics as well. And if you do have a marketing company that is doing your Google ads, they'll be the ones to set up your Google Tag Manager and that whole environment for you. But now I want to show you a really powerful tool to help you boost sales for your WooCommerce website, and it's Omnisend. It has things like abandoned carts, funnels, lead generation, cross sales. It has so much inside of this, and this is definitely guaranteed to boost sales when you apply these kind of strategies right here. Now to get started, all you got to do is log in. I'm going to show you how easy this is to get started. I've already set up my account. The first thing is I got to connect my store. So from here, I'm going to choose WooCommerce and then I'm going to download the plugin. And then we can see right here inside the WordPress directory. This is what I like right here. This is what I'm always looking for. When was the plugin last updated? You know, you can see that was just four days ago. This is really active right here. And you can see by the reviews, it's got great reviews. And in my experience as well, I always test out support. One of my things I always check first, how quick is the support? I was able to go to the chat bot right over here and talk to somebody within minutes when I need a support which was awesome all right let's continue this process here I'm gonna go back to my website to my plugins and I'm going to install it and then once you activate it the whole setup process is going to begin really quickly I'm going to go here to connect my store I'm going to connect my account right here and that is pretty much it. I'm going to give it the approval. So it's going to create web hooks. This is for your integrations. This is all automated. This is what makes this so powerful because you can focus only on the actual marketing, not all the technical stuff. It's automatically done. And when I show you all the different automations, uh, you're going to see the power in this. Now we got our setup wizard. You could brand it and you're going to want to spend time branding all this, but to go quick, we're just going to keep moving and all right, you could continue setting everything up. But what I want to look at first, I'm going to go check out the forms because this is something you could do really quickly, really easily right here. Watch how quick I'm able to do this. 
All right, we got this right here. Now, pop-up forms. If you do not like pop-up forms on the website and don't want to put one on your website, I got to tell you straight up, you got to get over that because these pop-up forms, they gather leads, they boost sales, they are effective. The thing about pop-up forms like this is they work. And if you were to offer, say, a 10% off on their first order, to get a sign up and for them to join your newsletter, then you're going to get so many leads. This is how you grow your marketing and how you sell your products. I can speak to you as a customer. I do apply. If it's a product I'm interested in, if it's a website that I feel like I'm interested in shopping on their website, I always sign up for the newsletter. I like to get the discount. I'm very frugal when it comes to shopping, but also I want to see what products they have, what promotions come up. I want to stay in the loop. And if ever I lose interest, then I just unsubscribe. These are effective right here. Now check this out. I'm just going to enable it right here. We have this enabled. Let's go back to the website. I'm going to go back to my homepage now on the website and check it out. It automatically is already connected and up here. We're able to start generating leads and building that list. Now, it does have this power by Omnisend, and that's only because we're using the free version right here. But going back over here, we could set this up. We could, you know, fill it out and we could create our steps as well. Now, this is just the sign up. Let's go back. Because check this out, we got our automations right here. And these are pretty much ready to go out the box, which saves a whole lot of time. You have your option for emails and then emails and SMS. Uh, this is only for a paid version, I believe. But let's start with the emails right now. And to get started, they do add a couple automations in here just to get started with. But check it out. We go to our workflow. First, we got cart abandonment. This is powerful right here. This boosts sales and it integrates directly into WooCommerce. We can set this up and then from here we could build out our own flow where somebody leaves a car. Well, we could send out an email for a certain amount of time. We could customize it and we could let them know, hey, uh, grab it before they're gone or here's a 5% coupon to help you get started with your first purchase. You could do things like this. You could create your A-B testing. You could split things up. You could create a thank you page for people. There's so many things that you could do right here. Like it is crazy. Let's check out more automations right here. Another one that I like are the product reviews. So from right here, we could create an automated email that gets sent out like this one by default is by two weeks. You could choose, you could put one week, two weeks, but you're basically creating a flow that is going to motivate your customers to fill out and give a review. You could even do something like offering a 10% coupon to give a review. Reviews are really, really important. If you just sit around waiting for people to give reviews, well, it's gonna be a very slow build. But if you're using a strategy like this and actively trying to engage with your customers to get those reviews, you're gonna see those reviews building up. And the more reviews you build, the more trust it builds and the more you continue to sell. This right here, okay, there are all kinds of different workflows. Like we could go down many different avenues in this. There's so much that could be done. But this right here, if you are building an e-commerce site for yourself, or if you are helping your client out with their e-commerce website, this is where we could be very effective. And as a business owner, this is really where you should be focusing on. You should be focusing on the marketing and sales, how to improve it. We got the tools that are ready for us, like back in stock. And there are so many things, order, follow up, you know, cross sales. We, we could go on and on. We got the tools right here, but with these tools and this one is probably the easiest, most effective way to get started. We could do a whole lot to boost our sales. And for anybody who is building e-commerce websites for their clients, this is a way you could add more value, but also get more business for yourself by helping your client build their business. And to get started with Omnisend, they do have a free plan. That way you could go ahead and check it out and give it a try. The free plan is limited to just 500 emails, but you could go ahead and give this a try. I guarantee that if you do at least the 500 emails, your form to get more signups, you're going to start to get some sales. You're going to start to boost those sales. And then you're going to see the value in, you know, starting to invest in a tool like this.
And this is just a first look of all the different possibilities of marketing that we could do and things we could do to boost sales using a tool like Omnisend. This is this is powerful right here. So definitely check out the link inside the description to check out Omnisend. And real quick, I want to leave you with the final thought because after teaching web design for several years now, I found a common problem with a lot of freelancers and agency owners, a problem where they do not want to touch e-commerce websites because e-commerce websites are not easy. They might seem easy when the client gives a brief, but when it comes time to actually building them, they get overwhelming. They take a lot longer. Usually we underprice them. That is a common problem for us web designers. But using a process like this, a step-by-step -step process, this right here is the key to building a successful website that can be launched on time that could have a successful launch. So please take my process, use it as your own. Go ahead and make whatever updates you need to make it fit your style perfectly because e-commerce clients are the best clients that I've ever had for long-term value. An e-commerce client is going to need continuous management, maintenance, but also growth. It's a constant process to grow an e-commerce website. That's why we use tools like Omnisend because you're going to set up marketing strategies and you're going to keep refining them you're going to keep adding things to the website you're going to keep testing them it's a great way to build long-term relationships with clients but also for your own personal business to work with clients they're going to give you long-term value if you have any questions drop them inside the comments and i'll be happy to help well that's it for this video thank you for watching and i will see you inside the next one